Hi, I'm Kelly and welcome to the Singing Boston. So I have some friends who are interested in getting into scent work and so I got them some little kits for Christmas this year. I'm pretty new to this myself so there's going to be a lot more experts out there than I am but I'm going to make these videos to help them teach scent work to their dogs. So while I have this handy kit here, if you're doing this at home and you don't have the real odors that are required for a scent work trial, you can use anything. You could use vanilla, um, almond extract, anything that you have around the house. Preferably liquid because that's gonna be a little easier. So I've got this cute little kit that was given to me a couple of years ago by a friend of mine, Sue. And in it, it has the four little bottles that are full of Q-tips. For AKC, there's four scents that they use. Birch, anise, clove, and cypress. Novice, which is the first level, uses birch. The next level uses anise and birch. And I told you, I'm learning on this too, so. Then the third level will introduce clove, and then finally cypress. So the kit comes with all the odors. And so you just take the birch and you put it in the birch Q-tips and then you leave it sealed up. You don't want to touch it with your hands when you're loading your hides because then the odor is going to be on your, your hands. So make sure you have some kind of tweezers. And then from there, any kind of container that you want. You will want for sure a cardboard box and you can see this has X's on it. This is what's called my hot box. This means this is the only box when I'm using cardboard containers that I put odor in. My cold boxes are boxes that have not been around my odor. There's some people that will go to the extreme and actually store the cold boxes in the garage and the hot boxes in the house. If you want to do that, great. But otherwise, I store mine. I've got a closet behind here that you can see, I'm sure. I store my hot boxes on the top shelf and I store all my cold boxes in this airtight tote down here. I do keep my odor completely away from wherever I store my equipment. So I have a little utility closet across the hallway that I use that I put the odor in. I also load all my odor in there. I also went to Goodwill and found just a whole bunch of different containers. So you do want different types so your dog gets used to it. I believe in novice for AKC, they only use boxes, but when you move up a level, then they will use different containers. So you can see this is porous. This is just a little wicker basket. Things like that are, this is plastic. So it's a different kind of material and it has holes in the end. It's a toothbrush holder. And you can see Ellie sitting beside me. She just had cataract surgery on Tuesday. So she's down here supervising me. You'll also want a bunch of plastic straws. This is usually what you put, hi Dice, the Q-tips in. So I would take it, again, I don't want to use my hands because I don't want odor on my hands. So when I'm rewarding, I'm confusing my dog where the odor is. You take it and you put it in either way, your straw. You can put your straw in the box. You can just put the Q-tip in the box. There's also this putty, the stuff I'm sure you've seen it for putting up posters and such. That's really handy if I want to stick this behind a door or something like that to just stick it to the wall. And I see that the game is afoot. So in AKC, there's five different events. There's interior, which means it would be like in a room someplace, but inside. There's exterior, which is exactly the same idea, except it's outside. And they will have little cones that define the search area. There's buried, which if you can see, I've got some sand here. Novice uses sand. Next level's up, use water. So I've got some empty containers here where we'll be doing water. Container search, which again, in novice is going to be your boxes. And then as you move up, it will be other containers. And then the coolest one is handler discrimination. That's where the handler will take a piece of clothing or a cotton ball with their odor in it, and they will put it in a box. 
The judge will put a cotton ball with their odor on it in a box, and then there will be several empty boxes. And the dog has to determine which scent is yours. So I think that one's pretty cool. I will typically use a sock that I wore the day before when I was running, so it's good and stinky, and I'll wear it inside my pants. So it definitely will have lots of my odor. I think Dice is ready to go here. There's also some fun stuff that you can buy. I just got some of these. So there's some shrink tube, and that's super handy if you use your mounting putty. And this is super cool. These are actually metal straws. They have a rare earth magnet in the middle. So if you do get them, you have to be careful that you don't push the magnet out of the middle. So just push the Q-tip in so far. You may have to cut it if it hangs out too far. And then they stick to metal bookcases or whatever. And then I have a little hangy one that has a little clip. And this one's made out of plastic. So again, you want to make sure that you're working different kinds of materials, wicker baskets, boxes, toothbrush holders, metal straws, whatever. Um, this little kit actually came with a little tin that's super cute, has a little smiley face, and that actually has a rare earth magnet inside of it already. So it does come with one. This kit, if you're interested in it, is from Learberg, and I will put that on the description of this video. Learberg.com. If you did want to spring for the actual odor instead of using things around the house, that's where you could get it. But again, things like vanilla extract or almond extract, whatever odors you may have around the house, just make sure you're consistent so you don't want to use vanilla one time and almond another time and bourbon another time and chicken broth another time. So make sure you're teaching them specific odors. So now we're going to get to a couple of different ways on how you start teaching your dog to go to odor. So this is Dice, he's gonna be our demo dog. Now Dice is already competing, so he knows how to play this game, so he's gonna make this look easy. But there's a couple different ways, actually I'm sure there's probably more than a couple different ways that you can train this. There's two ways really that I know how, because remember, I'm a beginner in this sport as well. One that I've heard some people actually don't like it, and to be honest, I'm not sure why, so I'm gonna to have to ask some questions on that, but it's called pairing. So if you have a metal dish, great, because then it will keep your container with the magnet in it in place. But if not, I've just got a plastic lid here. And what I'm gonna do, wait, I've got my clicker. You can use your verbal clicker if you prefer, which is the word yes. And I'm gonna put some cookies around the edge of this. Thereby pairing, hence the term pairing, the odor with food. Wait. Free. And I'm just going to cook for him interacting with that. And you can work this several short sessions until you see your dog is starting to recognize that this odor in this tin equals something good. My dogs are really used to, when I get stuff out, that there's going to be some kind of game, so they tend to interact with whatever I put on the ground. So in this case, I am going to put this on the ground, and I'm starting with birch, since that's the novice scent. And when he goes over to investigate it, I am going to click and treat. Find it. Yes. Ooh. Find it. Yes. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. And I'm going to kind of reset by throwing the odor. You don't want to ever, ever, ever tell your dog to leave it or drop it, whatever your command is, because you don't want them to do that. So when you're done, you obviously can't sit there forever and reward them. So either take a cookie and lead them away or take a cookie and toss it away. Now with Dice, he actually already has my end behavior that I'm looking for. And every dog will kind of have a natural alert that's a little different. So for Dice, what his ended up to be is that he will be sniffing along. There will be a bunch of containers. And when he gets to the box with the odor in it, if he's going to alert, he'll stop. He'll put his nose on it. And he looks at me and he puts his nose back. And I'm really starting to reward that stickiness. So I want him to then hold his nose on the, the odor so that it's a really definitive sign that he has alerted. 
So on this, I'll see if I can get him to do it sideways. You could see that he was kind of sticking his nose to the container. Okay, you gotta wait. And my command is find it. Some people use seek. Use whatever word you want as long as you're consistent. All right, find it. Yes. Yes. Good boy. And so now I'm going to lead him away. Good boy. Even when he's being sticky, I'll lead him away. And I'll pick it up and I'll reset. If you are ever competing, you are allowed to reward them with food or a toy. Toy can't leave your hands. But if you drop your food, you just disqualified yourself. So when you saw me just drop that cookie, I would have disqualified myself if I had qualified. So make sure that you use cookies that don't crumble. These are some freeze-dried fish, so they're pretty crumbly. I would use something like string cheese or baby bell, a uh, piece of chunked up ham or something that wouldn't crumble. Find it. Yes. And as soon as they go over to investigate, if they even look in that direction, click and treat or say yes and treat. I've got it in my hand right now. He's looking for it. So he's going right over to it, but he already knows how to play the game. So you're going to reward that incremental behavior. Again, positive choice-based training methods. So you make it fun for everybody. And then as they start getting better about finding it, then you kind of start moving it around. Wait. Find it. Yes. And notice I'm not rewarding when he looks at me. I'm waiting for his attention, yes, to go back to the odor. I don't want it to be, hey, there, and then he gets rewarded for looking at me. I want to reward him for his attention on the odor. At first, you're going to have to be really fast, most likely, and it's just going to be an incremental second that they're going to be on it. But then as they get better and better about it and they start learning what the game is, then you can start rewarding that for when they get sticky. I'm not going to click right away, but again, he knows the game. So we've worked our way up over literally months. He kind of struggled to pick this up for a couple of months. And then all of a sudden something just clicked in his head and now he loves it and he understands what the game is. So I'm going to delay the click until he sticks on the odor a little bit. And this is going to be an advanced skill for you. Find it. Yes! Did you see that stick? Yes! Good boy! And you notice that he, while he did stick to the odor, he started looking at me, so he did not get rewarded for that. It was when his attention went back to the tin that I then rewarded him. Find it. Yes! And you want to make sure that you're rewarding him yes. on top of the odor. You don't want him to come back to you to get the reward. The point of this game is the odor, not you. You can tell he really enjoys it. This is the look that you want with your dog. So if either of you get stressed out by what you're doing, it's time to stop. Go do something fun. Ask them for a simple behavior like a hand touch. And if you don't know what this is, go back and watch one of our videos called You Can Touch This. Next time, we'll talk about how to start introducing your dog to the odor using a box. But for now, take your time, be patient, several short sessions throughout the day or throughout the week, and just have some fun teaching your dog to use <laughs> his natural instincts. We'll see you next time.